Welcome to another episode of AA Illustrates. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a very popular topic, which is dun 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 migrating to Automation 360 Cloud. So we're gonna talk about your migration options if you're a V11 or V10 Automation Anywhere customer, how you can set up your migration, exactly how that migration looks, and I'm gonna go through the process. I have a V11 environment set up right now. We're gonna migrate that live on the video here uh, all the way to an Automation 360 Cloud environment and then do some smoke testing to make sure that our new environment is working. Sound good? So. First off, let's take a look at your migration options. So again, if you're coming from version 10 or version 11, assuming compatibility with your specific version, you do have the ability to migrate to either a pure cloud solution where your control room, data, and product updates are all handled directly in cloud. Uh, again, your data is stored securely in cloud, so it's not just like hanging out there, but uh, all of this would run directly in cloud and be managed by Automation Anywhere. The middle option is a cloud-enabled solution where essentially your data, your databases, your control room are all running locally, but you are connected to the Automation Anywhere cloud and updates can be pushed to your local environment. In this case, uh, your control room has some components in cloud and some components local running in your environment. And then the third option is an on-premises with updates via cloud. Here, your database, your control room, all of your data, all of that runs local in your environment. So for that redundancy and high availability, you would want to make sure that you've set that up in a clustered environment. Now, one thing I want to touch on here that this chart is missing. I pulled this directly from our documentation. You may have seen this in other presentations or things like that. But one thing I think is missing from this is where do my bot runners exist, right? And I want to clarify this to say that just because I'm using pure cloud or just because I'm using the on-prem solution doesn't mean that I can't have cloud bot runners or on-prem bot runners or vice versa, right? So notice that for all three of these solutions, I have the cloud logo. I also have, I guess, the on-prem logo, right? And that means that even though my control room may be in the cloud, I can still have a bot runner that is in my local organization. So as we're gonna see here in a little bit, I'm gonna migrate to cloud but then my bot runner is going to be my local workstation, right? So I can still use physical desktops or physical machines if I need to, or my local VMs that are Windows 10 that are set up to be bot runners. I can use those with cloud. I can also use those with on-prem. So that part really doesn't matter. As long as your machine is able to talk to that control room, whether that's on cloud, whether that's done locally, uh, you will be able to use that as a bot runner. But for this session, we're gonna focus exclusively on cloud. If you're doing an on-prem migration, we'll have another video just for that. So if you wanna see how to do the on-prem migration, you can watch that one. This video is gonna focus on doing a migration to cloud. So specifically, what is the pre-work we need to take care of? Number one is verify your version compatibility. And we talked about this a second ago, but make sure within the documentation, I'm gonna have some links below so you can check this stuff yourself, uh, but make sure that you are compatible with the cloud migration utility that you're about to use. Make sure that your specific version of version 10 or version 11 is compatible for a migration. It might mean that you have to do like one small upgrade to your V10 or V11 environment to make sure you're compatible first. Um, but the compatibility has been expanding with every single release. So just make sure to check that so you know what you're getting yourself into. Number two is run the bot scanner utility. So again, I'll have a link for this down below. The bot scanner utility is a small utility that you can execute against your own repository of bots, right? So you would copy them from your control room or run them off of your local um, development environment but you would basically point this utility to where all of your bots are. It will scan and analyze all of those bots, and then it will come back with you with a report to tell you what's the percentage of migratable bots. It will also provide some suggestions on bots that may require some additional uh, adjustments after they've been migrated to Automation 360. Now, you should be shooting for a uh, percent of migratable bots of 90% or greater, if you get that, you have the green light for a migration. Less than that, you'll wanna work with your CSM, your account manager to understand uh, when additional packages are going to be available to support your bots, 
or take a look at the specific recommendations that are available in the uh, bot scanner utility report that can give you some guidance on how you can adjust your bots to make them ready for migration to get you above that 90% mark. Uh, request your Automation 360 migration license. We'll talk about this here in a second, but when you're ready to migrate, you'll need to tell your CSM, tell your account manager, they will start that process for you. And when you kick that process off, it will generate an Automation 360 cloud environment for you. It will also generate an email for you with a cloud migration security code. And I'll show you that here in a second. And we'll use that when we start our own migration. The other part I want to mention is you'll want to make sure that from your control room server, you do have open outgoing 443 traffic to the two addresses listed here. Again, I'm going to have a reference for this down below so that you can check all these out and you can trust what I'm saying. Uh, but you will have to at least temporarily open up traffic to uh, those two locations through that port just so that your um, V11 or V10 environment can be appropriately migrated. And then the last thing is you'll want to make sure your credential vault is set in express mode. If you don't have it set in express mode, you won't be able to migrate the credential values and credential variables uh, to your Automation 360 target environment. So you'll want to set that into express mode. If you were using manual mode before, you can set it in express mode temporarily for that migration. And then once it's been migrated, you can set it back into manual mode if you want. Personally, even in leading uh, enterprise solutions of this at Fortune 100 companies, we were using express mode. We, there was not a significant reason for us to use uh, manual mode here. But anyway, for, for each his own, that's how it's going to work. All right, so looking at the cloud migration general flow, this is what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to try to highlight each of these so that we know exactly what's a V11 step versus what's an Automation 360 step. So like I mentioned before, your first step is to request that migration license slash environment. And that will kick off the process where you get a uh, basically a temporary license that you can use in Automation 360 as you're starting to migrate from V11 to Automation 360, right? And the, the general process would be that I want to migrate everything over. And then once everything is migrated, I'll start to uh, migrate my actual bots, right? That's a slightly separate process once you're already migrated to the Automation 360 cloud environment. And then you'll check those bots just to make sure they're working. And as those start to become functional, fully functional, reliable, right? You would run them in Automation 360, and then you would take them down off of your V11 or V10 environment from the scheduling or triggering or whatever they were being used before. So it starts with requesting this. The next part is installing the cloud migration utility. And the cloud migration utility is unique to doing cloud migrations. Um, again, we have another video for the on-prem installation or the on-prem migration. And what you'll see in that is that it's pretty manual, right? We have to do the database backup. We have to grab the DAT file for the credential vault. We have to get all of the files from the repository. We have to move all that stuff over. When you're doing a cloud migration, you use this cloud migration utility. It does all of that stuff for you. And you're going to see it's pretty easy to set up as well. We run the cloud migration utility, right? I had to have one extra step here. So we'll go through that entire process of installing it and running that cloud migration utility. It's very easy to set up. And that security code that I mentioned that comes in that migration email will be our reference to basically tie our execution of this cloud migration utility to our tar target Automation 360 environment. Number four is we wait for that success email. So after you've run your cloud migration utility, at that point, it's going to essentially zip everything up and take that to your Automation 360 environment. Now, there are some processing that has to happen there to basically take all of your data, take all of your bots and move them to the Automation 360 environment. So it's not instantaneous, but within 24 hours, you will get that success email. I've done this a couple times so far, and I think I've gotten the success email like within uh, 15 minutes to an hour. Maybe I got lucky on my timing or things like that, uh, but it generally should come within 24 hours. The next step is, and again, I marked these in different colors just so we could really clearly see which environment we're talking about. But uh, the next step is to validate our migration and do some basic smoke testing with a simple bot just to make sure that our new environment is up and running. 
And then finally, you would go through the process of starting to migrate your bots. And we're gonna have a separate video for that because uh, migrating your bots, I know sounds a little bit redundant because we just did a migration up here and then we're saying to migrate your bots down here. But what we mean by that is there's an actual process where you're going to go through a migration wizard on the Automation360 interface and it's going to convert your ATMX files into Automation360 compatible bots. So this migration that we're talking about here is really just moving everything from one environment to another. So what we're gonna see is when we open our Automation360 environment for the first time, we just have a bunch of ATMX files, but we can't actually execute them. It's this process where you have to migrate your bots through that migration wizard that will convert them into Automation360 compatible bots. And that process is the same whether you're using cloud or whether you're using on-prem. So we're gonna do that in a separate video so that we can knock both of those out. So that's what we're gonna do for this video. Let's take a look at our V11 environment to get a little bit of a baseline. Uh, I'm using a virtual machine here. So uh, this is the same one that I'll be using for the on-prem migration as well. So we can see this. Um, I don't have a crazy environment set up here. I've got a couple bots and I did it that way because I want it to be somewhat representative of what you would see, right? I've got bots, I've got some credentials set up, I've got a couple custom roles, I've got a couple of users. So I want you to see how all of that stuff migrates. Um, but I don't need to be a hero and show you an environment with 1500 bots and then we migrate it and it takes forever and the video is way longer than it needs to be. So um, just want to show like this is the environment as it exists right now. We've got several bots uh, and, and some of them have some subtasks here. This supply chain management one um, has a subtask. It also has a metabot here and it's got this supply chain metabot. And so we wanna pay attention to those things so that when we convert them, we can see exactly how that works. And that will be as a part of that um, bot migration wizard that we'll be doing in a separate video. We've got one device that's defined. It's actually this same server. I'd set it up as a bot creator. I was using it before. So that device is showing us connected. Uh, for my audit log, I do have a little bit of history here. And then for administration, we have a total of three users that have been created and uh, two custom roles. And you can see that each of those custom roles have one person um, assigned to it. So the first step, like we said, was to download the uh, cloud migration utility. and in the email that you get with your security code for doing that migration, it will include a link to this. You can also find this on the A People Downloads uh, location, which is where you'd come for all of your product updates or new versions or things like that. But um, specifically, it's right up here, the Enterprise Cloud Migration Utility. And I can go through the process of downloading that utility I've already actually downloaded it, so I just wanted to show you where it is. Um, for the purposes of this video, we'll be using the uh, .23 version release of this, uh, which came out on December 16th of 2021. So if you're watching this later, there might be a slightly newer version. It should work the same, but um, that's, that's what we'll be using. So I've downloaded that already. It is right here in my downloads directory. So I'm going to extract that. and we will execute this. So it actually does, uh, it does require an install. So I'll have to install that and then I can run it. It's not just like a self uh, executing file here. Okay, I've got free space. I'm gonna delete some of these other installers that I had here because I don't need those like this. Actually, the zip versions I don't need. Get rid of that guy. And this one. All right. So we'll clear up a little bit of space because uh, I don't have unlimited space on this drive. All right. So here's my cloud migration utility. I'm going to run this as an administrator. Uh, like I said, I, I believe it does do an actual installation here. It's not just something that you can run as a utility on its own. So we're gonna let that go. And we'll do this for English. 
uh, it does have to install two uh, dependent utilities, so we'll hit install for those. This may or may not show up for you depending on what's already been installed on your uh, control room server. Next, of course, I've read these before, but if you guys want to read them, for sure, go for it. And next, and install. So super easy install, just a next, next, next kind of deal. When we actually start to launch the utility and start to use it, that's where we'll have to fill in some specific details about our control room. We'll see that it recognizes a lot of that stuff automatically already but uh, we will have to pay close attention to actually configuring that as we set it up to migrate to our Automation360 cloud environment. Okay, so I know that was a lot of fast forwarding through those uh, parts. Um, that's not the most exciting thing to watch. So we will hit finish here and uh, let's get into the, the meat of this, which is actually launching this cloud migration utility and seeing how it works. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started. You can only con migrate one control room at a time. Uh, this utility does need admin root access to the control room. That should be no issue for us. That's fine. So we'll hit get started. Here it's going to try to automatically connect to my control room. It knows that I'm already running this from your control room, so that's great. I don't think you technically have to run it from your control room, but it would be best to do so. Um, so run it from your control room and also do this at a time when you're going to have some planned downtime, right? Because what you don't want to do is uh, do your migration and then end up with some kind of mixed data of like, hey, we had a bunch of bots that were running and we didn't have the recording of the, that data or those runs showing up in our new environment. So I would plan to do this when you have some downtime, whether that's on a weekend or some evening or something like that. So you don't have a lot of bots running during that time frame and the control room CPU and resources can be focused on running this and migrating this content out and then you can resume your bots and things like that afterwards. So a couple things here. Uh, it recognized my installation path, which is correct. It also uh, recognized my repository path. If you had to change those because for any reason you had done a customized install or this is on a cluster or you did it on a sand drive or something like that, um, you can obviously change these, but it recognized those automatically, so we're good here. My host name and um, uh, database name are correct. So I, this is the name of the, the machine that I'm working off of. My database is named CRDB, so it got all of that correct. I am using Windows Authentication and I am logged in as a user who is an admin on that database, so we're all good there. If you're using SQL Authentication, you could change that. And then it's going to uh, do a backup here. Let's see what this says. I believe it stores some files related to the backup and uh, temporary location where files will be stored uh, before they're uploaded. So it's just going to store those to my user directory. Nothing should be there after the install or after the migration. It's just for temporary files. I'll hit next here. Now, while that's running, I'm going to get onto my other screen and I want to show you this email. So it's going to calculate everything it knows about my control room. Uh, I believe that I read that the limitation in space was that your control room repository had to be less than 20 gig, meaning your actual bots uh, and, and supporting files. So if it's larger than that, you may have to migrate some of those bots manually, but uh, I, I haven't seen uh, many control rooms that are, that are north of 10 gig, uh, let alone 20. So one thing it is recommending that I'm... Uh, out of disk space, let's see, because it will take 70% of your disk space. We're gonna roll the dice here. 
Uh, I can probably delete, let me delete a couple things here, just so we'll get rid of the zip of this, we'll get rid of control room, we'll get rid of this. That should give me the space that I need. Let's see. 5.6 gig, we're good enough. We're gonna go for it. Um, <clears throat> so it's recognized that my uh, total disk space required is only 0.83 gig. Um, so I think that's only 83 meg. That should be fine. We have plenty of space on this drive for supporting that. Uh, so we'll hit continue. Now this is where you need that migration code. And here's that email that I was talking about. I'm gonna bring this over here. So I got this email and uh, it says, hey, basically you're ready for your cloud migration. Here's a link to download the uh, cloud migration utility, which I showed you earlier. Here's the installation instructions. If you wanna go through those, it's pretty much just a next, next, next kind of deal. When you're doing your migration, this is the actual key or the security code that it's asking for. So I'm gonna copy all of that and let me do it from the end here to make sure I don't get a bunch of blanks at the end. I'm gonna copy that. Uh, I'm not blurring it out here because uh, A, this is only good for 30 days and B, it's a one-time use. So this isn't gonna be of much value for anyone else. Move this back over here and fill in my security code and then I'll hit validate. And cool, so it says that the migration code has been validated. I must complete it within one hour to avoid timing out and restarting. So this is the name of my new environment, which will be my AA DevX mtest4. Uh, and that's what was indicated here as well. And it is a prod environment. So I'm good here. It recognized my code. I'll hit next. And now it's gonna go through the process of uh, extracting the data from my control room database, getting all the bots from my repository, zipping all of that stuff up and moving it to the cloud environment. So I'm gonna let this run. I'll probably fast forward this part a little bit too as it starts to go. Um, but it's gonna go through the process of migrating all of that content right now. Okay, cool, so that finished. Um, it actually went pretty quick once it got started. It looked like zipping up my database was the, or extracting data from the database, I should say, uh, was the, the longest part. Uh, so now I will wait for the control room email. So I'll get a success email that comes from this control room letting me know that my content has been migrated. It will say, hey, it's been a success. It will prompt me to create an admin user on that control room. And uh, then we'll go through the process of just smoke testing that new environment to make sure things are working. So I'm gonna exit out of this and uh, we'll rejoin the video as soon as I get that email. A few moments later. Okay, so my email just came. It took about 20 minutes exactly for that uh, migration to complete. But it sent me, uh, hey, we've successfully migrated the data from your control room to Automation Anywhere Cloud. Uh, log into the control room to finish setting it up. So it sent me an admin username and password. Uh, and then we can click this link and it should enable us to... Um, start setting things up. So let's take a look <clears throat> and I'll copy that password to log in. We should be able to log in with any of the uh, old accounts too. We'll try that here in a second. Let's do this one first just to make sure that uh, we can get in here. So I always screw up the typing of that. All right. I think that's spelled correctly. Uh, more terms and conditions. Oh man, you have to actually scroll on that one. Uh, I've read those before, so accept and log in. And we're in. So uh, a prompt to get some details about the navigation and things like that. Um, I'm pretty confident on those, so I'm gonna dismiss that for now but we wanna see what actually got migrated. So if we go here to the automation um, tab, and if you're brand new to Automation 360, that's totally fine. I wanna just walk through just a couple things of, of where things are laid out and how things are set up. 
So notice along the top here we have a public directory and the public repository is basically where all of your bots and files live that are eligible for execution. So if I created a bot that goes and scrapes this website and fills out data in Excel, uh, I would need to check that into public before I could um, schedule that to run on a bot run or anything like that. So we see the public directory here because we're an admin. If you're a bot creator user or a bot runner user, uh, you may, you probably wouldn't see it as a bot runner. As a bot creator, you'll have another tab here which is gonna say private, and that will be your private repository. And bots and files that are in that private repository, you can work on, you can modify, you can run in debug mode, um, but they would not be eligible for scheduling unless or until you check them in. And that's where we have versioning and things like that that come into play where like hey I checked out this version I'm modifying it the old version can still run successfully in production without issue but as I finish it and check it back in that would be the new version that would be live in public and and so we could go from there the other big change is uh, a tighter integration with bot store so I'm gonna log into this real quick just because I want to show you some of this stuff uh, spelled it wrong again over two. All right. So here I have logged into Bot Store, and I have a Bot Store account where I have essentially purchased all of these items, right? So there's a bunch of packages, there's a bunch of bots that I've gotten. And so with any of these, I have the ability to actually install them directly into my control room. Now you see that this says, item has no menu items it's because the user that i'm logged into right now doesn't have the ability to manage packages so i want to have a user that has the access to manage packages that user would be able to then install these components uh, they'd also have to have the bot store permission and, and we can talk about roles here in a little bit but um, that would enable me to install any extra packages and those would show up for me just like the commands that I had in version 11 along that left hand side of my workbench uh, the that's what custom packages enable me to do and so I can do things like um, JSON object manager file and folder attributes file conversion web automation package there's a ton of really cool packages available in bot store and you can open and view bot store from here as well um, but there's a lot of great packages that are available there and you can download and install them directly into your control room. All right, stay on task, Micah. If we go back to the, let's see, devices, we don't have any devices that have been set up in this environment yet. We will uh, create one here in a little bit so we can see that. Uh, global values, we didn't have any of those. Credentials, we do have a credential that should have been migrated. We'll log out as this user and log in as our developer here in a moment so we can see that. Um, packages, these are all the default packages that have been installed as a part of the product. There's a ton of them. Each of these packages has one to, I, I think that the Excel Advanced has like 40, 40 actions. So each of them have a bunch of actions that you can use and those are essentially the building blocks for your Automation 360 bots. The last thing we wanna look at is our uh, Automation, uh, or let's see, our um, users and roles. So I do have four users now, right? Because this is the, the cloud migration created this admin user for me six minutes ago. The rest of these were migrated from my old environment. So that's cool, that's working. And then for my roles, um, my roles, my custom roles here translated over. So that's perfect. I can then go and modify these to add some of the new functionality that I want them to uh, be able to use. So for our, um, this is our creator role. So let's give them the ability to manage packages so we can install one. We also want to give them the ability to register devices and we'll just have them register and delete and edit, that'll be fine. So just some slight modifications for that role so that we can show some stuff here. Um, I think that should be good for right now. And then for the bots repository, so this is what they will have access to um, in the public directory. So we'll see here that they have the metabots and my tasks. The rest of these folders are frankly empty, so I can clean those up later and delete them. 
I don't necessarily need my bot creator user to have access there. And then anything that's been installed from bot store, like let's say that we downloaded, and I said fr I d bought because like every most everything on bot store is free anyway, so I just said bot, but uh, anyway, anything that I had like downloaded in bot store and I wanted to install, those would install to the bot store directory. So if it's like a sample bot showing how that thing works, um, I, I want to give my user access to that as well so that they can do that. For run as, I'm going to leave that alone. doesn't matter for right now in bot creator. All right. So let's sign out of this guy and I'll change the password here in a little bit, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. I'm going to log out of the admin and I'm going to log in as my um, creator account. Okay, so I'm logged in as my creator. Um, and the first thing I wanna do is add a device because I wanna just do like a quick smoke test to make sure that my new Automation 360 environment is running properly. So I'm going to click here and select to connect local device. And I'll say connect to my computer. Now, I already had the Automation uh, Anywhere bot agent installed, so Notice that it went super quick and recognizing that and then uh, enabling me to finish setting this up. If you didn't have the bot agent installed, as soon as you click that, it would prompt you to download that bot agent. You just do a very quick install. That's like the only component that uh, connects your machine to the control room, whether it's cloud or whether it's on-prem. And then it also installs the Chrome extension. Again, I already had that, so it didn't install that part. It kind of skipped over that. But uh, if you didn't have the Automation 360 Chrome extension, which again is different from the Chrome extension that's being used in V10 and V11, then it would install that as well. Uh, the other thing you can set up here is if your operating system uh, supports multiple concurrent users, then you could set this for multiple users. Uh, I don't think that's actually a function of the flavor of Windows 10 that I have, so I'm gonna leave it at single. But this makes sense if you're running um, like server 2019, and you have set your concurrent sessions to something greater than two or whatever it is, um, you'd be able to set that up. All right, so my bot creator has a device that is connected. If we go to the automation tab, here we can see the private tab, right? So I've got private, I have bot store still, and then I have public. And uh, I can currently only view these sample bots in, actually I don't have any sample bots, in my private directory because the bots that migrated are all in the public directory. So if I wanted to do something with these, I would have to check them out into my private directory first and then I could do something. Now, I'm not gonna do that because the bot migration component, and it's not on this menu because I'm not an admin, but the bot migration component will actually migrate those from ATMX files to Automation 360 uh, compatible bots and we will just leave them in public for all of that so we don't need to do that what we are going to do here is just create one sample bot just to make sure things are working and that I'm able to communicate to my control room that we can run a bot things like that so let's go down here to just message box drag that guy over and welcome to automation 360 cloud I'll hit save and run and at this point my automation 360 cloud control room should be deploying a bot to my local machine which again is running at Micah Smith's house and uh, it's able to run that bot and so what we're seeing there is that yeah if I want to have a, um, a bot runner or a creator device in cloud I could do that if I want my creator or runner device to be on-prem I can do that as well so no limits there. So that's the end of our Automation 360 um, cloud migration um, tutorial here. The next video is we're going to have a migrating your bots session where we're gonna use that bot migration wizard and talk about how we can migrate those bots, what that process is like, the roles that need to be set up, and then also uh, how we can test and tweak those bots after they've been migrated, okay? so. 
Be sure to like and subscribe for more Automation Anywhere content and more migration content. My name is Micah Smith. Go be great. Mm -hmm.